Hey everyone, the name is Erector, and I know I haven't made a lot of videos lately. But you know, sometimes you're gonna have a good day, and sometimes you're gonna have a bad day. And you know, sometimes I think you're just gonna have to learn to deal with it. I was thinking, and I've been thinking for probably all my life about my sensitivity and my struggles to remain consistently productive. I felt a lot of the time that I should be stronger, or I should be better, or I should be somehow more able to put out content and to achieve my goals and I should be more ambitious and I should show more drive and I should show more force, you know. I shouldn't let a bad day or a conflict or a struggle in my life get me down. I should be able to stay strong at all times, but you know, it's impossible. No person can be strong at all times. So today I want to talk about introverted feeling and INFPs and ISFPs. And of course, ISFJs and INFJs, who also show a lot of introverted feeling as a flow function. So, something I've come to notice about our types is, like, we are typically the most likely to be described as sensitive. And that means we are often going to be meek in a conflict. We're often going to turn the other cheek. We're going to be understanding, accepting, forgiving in times where other people would uh, get upset or angry or judgmental. Often what, uh, what comes to happen with introverted feeling is we tend to absorb and take on the emotions of other people. We take on the emotions of other people and we try to describe meaning to people's feelings and experiences and actions. We contemplate and introspect on our own actions and our own behavior as well as the actions and behaviors of other people, trying to understand why, why they do it, what they're feeling, what the reasoning is, what the motive is, what made them do it, what, where it all came from. And that's probably also why we are so prone to being understanding and forgiving. We can see their point of view and we usually have a strong autobiographic memory to boot so we can remember a time when we felt the same way or a similar situation where we went through something that also felt like that or made us do something like that. So introverted feeling is a cognitive function associated with understanding and interpersonal intelligence and the struggle for our types has been spelled out quite clearly. In a conflict, we tend to turn the other cheek. We tend to back down. We tend to let other people bully us around. We tend to let other people shove us aside. When other people want something, we tend to set our own needs aside and we tend to focus on what will make everyone happy. So, our need for harmony creates a fear of conflict and disharmony. Just as big as our need for and our love of harmony is our fear and our difficulty with managing disharmony. So, at many times, the only thing another person has to do to get what they want is get angry with us. You know, they have to raise their voice, they have to get upset. And it's not necessarily so that we we are somehow weaker than other personality types. In fact, I would argue we are more resilient than other personality types. We tend to shoulder the emotions and the well-being of the group and of everyone around us. And we tend to be very strong in holding up the group, serving as the social glue or the knit that holds the group together and keeps everyone from falling apart. You know, without us, there would be conflict everywhere. Nobody would understand anyone. Nobody would be able to forgive any mistake that happened. But because of us, people can understand and can translate each other's feelings and difficulties and can move past it. So we tend to hold up the group and keep the group from falling apart or becoming tense or falling into discord. We tend to find a way to maintain the peace around us. And that's our superpower and that's why we are also so resilient, you know. Other people will quickly lose their head in a conflict, get angry, get competitive. They might start to want to win and to crush the other person rather than to try to get their point of view across. Rather than find a harmony, they will try to find a victory. And while fights and the conflict and competition is necessary and sometimes healthy, it's not something that is for the introverted feeling type. As an introverted feeling type, you should never wish for a conquest or victory or 
uh, to win over another person because often what you'll find is you will find no joy, no peace in winning over another person if you know that they have to suffer for it. You won't find happiness in getting your way if it means other people don't get what they want. So you have to ultimately hold on to and remain true to some idea of fairness. Now obviously it's a bad and unhealthy thing to do to avoid a conflict or to put set yourself aside or to ignore your own needs. Obviously, you have own needs, own expectations, own ideals that are important to you. And you know, the more I find myself becoming aware of my ideals and what it is I want and who I am, the more I find myself wishing for strength to be stronger, to be better in a conflict, to be more pushy, to be more assertive. And this is the conundrum I've been in, you know, I felt that I've wanted to have higher responsibilities and a higher position of power so that I can help other people and so that I can get my ideals too and so that I can make things better for other people. But I found it difficult to assert myself and get what I want. I found it difficult to speak out for myself because I don't want to speak out against anyone else. I found it hard to represent myself and say this is what I want. And so I found myself and my own needs ignored and I failed to represent myself and to represent my ideals. Perhaps if I had this position or if I was more assertive, I would have been able to help more people or I may have been able to do more good. But because I've lacked the confidence to speak out and to truly represent myself, I've had to keep up with and put up with other people getting their way and seeing these people bring greater disharmony and conflict and failing to understand other people I've had to hold responsibility for the pain they cause and the struggles that they have prolonged because of this and this is a pattern I've had all my life in school and in politics I've let other people win and I've let people win who should not have won I've let people push themselves through and I've let the loudest voice win but the loudest voice is not always the best voice and it's not necessarily that just because you are strong and that you are confident and that you believe in yourself that you should believe in yourself or that you should have power that you should have responsibility even though society tends to reward the strong you know society has always written a lot of books and uh, arguments and articles and you know the culture we live in today is for the strong is for the assertive is for the confident confidence can get you further than wisdom in many ways in that a person who is confident and pretends to know is going to have more charisma than a person who is wise but lacks confidence People are going to assume the confident person knows more than what they do and they're going to assume the wise person knows less than what they do. So obviously the lesson here is you have to develop confidence but what I've had to learn, what I've had to accept is I cannot, I should not choose the path of a conqueror. I cannot stoop to their level. I cannot become that kind of person. I know I've tried, many times I've tried to be shabby and pushy, I've gone into these moods where I've been like, now I'm gonna really force my way through and this time I'm gonna do it and now I'm gonna be a man and I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna be so strong and I'm gonna be so harsh and I'm gonna say it, uh, say what is on my mind and everyone is gonna have to back down. But what I've found in conflict is I say these things and I feel the pain of the other person and I feel their struggles and I feel what is my right to say this and I realize that I'm starting to feel drained. I attract drama and conflict and I start feeling weighed down by the drama and conflict and I start blaming myself and I start feeling like I've become somebody I'm not meant to be. So I have to learn to find another way and that's where I start to really realize the strength of the introverted feeling personality types, you know. You can find strength in harmony and in peace and in self-awareness. Self-awareness is power just as brute, just as strong as <laughs> raw power is. Self-awareness gives you control, gives you confidence, gives you trust and it can give you the chance and opportunity to help other people. So how it works is in a conflict 
you have to remain empathetic. You have to remain strong. You have to remain steady. You know, you have to find in yourself a position of calm, peace, acceptance, and understanding. If you can understand the other side and your own side, and if you can represent yourself and those you care about and protect those people, and if you can speak out calmly and with a level head and say what you feel and what you know and what you understand, while the other person is upset, you can show power, you know, there's a power in being able to speak calmly when the other person has raised their voice. There is a power in showing understanding when the other person shows judgment. There is a power in remaining open to mediate and to find a balance when other people are trying to compete or push or cause drama. If you can be the kind of person that can calmly express what you want and what you need and what you care about and what you value, you're going to show power and you're going to show strength. So what you want to do is, rather than lose your head or rather than uh, lose yourself in the conflict, you're going to have to visualize harmony. You're going to have to think about what harmony will look like, what will make everyone happy, what will make me able to protect the people around me, what can I do to keep as many people as possible at peace, what can I do to solve a conflict if there is a conflict, what can I do to make things better. And to do this, you're going to have to introspect. So in a conflict, what you might need to do is you might need to take a step back, introspect, reflect, understand. You're going to have to listen. What does the other person say? Why are they doing what they're doing? What made them do it? What are they feeling? You're going to have to start recognizing your own emotions, your own anger, your own fears, your own anxieties, as well as the anxieties of others and their ang upset, what they're upset about and what they struggle with. And you're going to be able to, and you're going to have to be creative in coming up with a solution, a way to heal, suit, and protect other people. So what you have to develop in yourself is the ability to understand what will make things better. You know, this can only come from experience. Only with time, only with uh, experience can you know what solutions work and what you can do to solve a conflict or deal with a problem or argue with a person who is hostile towards you. Only in time and with experience can you learn to find what a group needs to be happy, what uh, you can do to solve a common anxiety or a common fear in other people, or for that matter, in yourself. Introverted feeling is just as much about the self as about the emotions. Emotions are just as subjective as the self. Emotions are one of the core focuses of the introverted feeling type. You know, if extroverted feeling focuses on the people and the relationships and the connections and what is happening around you, the introverted feeling type focuses on the intentions and the meaning and the purpose behind people's actions. So, often what I see as introverted feeling is subjective in that it focuses on things that are not there. You know, you cannot visibly see any of these things. You cannot. Uh, point at introverted feeling and say this is introverted feeling you cannot uh, talk about it like it is a physical or objective thing it is a subjective thing at most at best it's an accurate assumption about how another person is feeling so another point of developing introverted feeling is learning to properly recognize both your feelings and the feelings of the other person you can sometimes read in feelings that aren't that are not there. You can sometimes assume that the person is feeling something that they're not really feeling. So you have to learn to properly understand a feeling, you know, and a feeling has a lot of nuance and uh, a part of interpersonal intelligence is learning to properly label these feelings, you know, to not just understand it is anger, but to understand what kind of anger it is and where it comes from and which direction it is headed towards. An, an emotion can have many different manifestations and our language and vocabulary is simply not good enough to capture and understand all of it. What's the difference between an anger or a frustration? What's the difference between hate and anger? What's the difference between a faked anger and real anger? You know, there's fake emotions and real emotions and that's also an important thing, an important topic to think about. Sometimes other people will mislead you and cloud your judgment with fake emotion 
What this means is instead of showing you what they are really feeling, they will mask their feeling with something else. And anxiety can be masked as anger, just as an anger can be masked as an anxiety. A person might show shame when what they really are showing is fear. And so learning to properly recognize emotion is also important to properly administer the right medicine to it. If people mislead you, you might find yourself treating the symptom, not the cause. And so you'll find yourself surprised because you've done so much to help this emotion, but it's not going away and it's still there and it's still coming and coming and coming back over and over again. So where is it really coming from? A master of interpersonal intelligence is a person that knows the difference between a secondary and a primary emotion and can track the difference between a fake and a real emotion. This kind of person can also recognize the difference between their own feelings and feelings of other people. You know, sometimes other people are going to have struggles that you cannot solve. You cannot protect everyone. You cannot heal every wound. You cannot solve every problem for everyone. There are going to be times when your understanding is not going to be enough, when, when your feelings are not going to work out. And what you can do is not always going to fix every problem. And you have to recognize and accept this in yourself, you know. And this is a difficult thing even for me. I make myself responsible for everyone's feelings. And so I assume it is my fault when I cannot solve their bad issues. Here, a patience also has to develop. And a patience is, even if you know what is right for another person, and even if you have a solution, the other person might not want to drink the medicine. And they might not be ready for it. So, you have to respect other people's process. You have to respect if a person is holding on to pain and is refusing to give up. You're going to have to accept if another person is going to hold on to anger and frustration and is not ready to understand or forgive. So, you're going to have to accept negative emotions and conflict around you. And you're going to have to trust that harmony will come and that peace will find a way and that there will be a solution one day. And so, you're going to have to learn to cope with short-term conflict and with negative emotions from other people. Life cannot just be sunshine and it should never be sunshine. It should be a balance and you have to learn to roll with both the highs and at the lows. You have to understand that the darkness is just as important as light. And I'm speaking here from metaphor. But what I'm saying is you have to learn to cope with the most difficult of conflicts. You have to learn to feel okay even in the most big of struggles. Even when you are anxious, you're going to have to find a way to be okay. Even when you feel pain, you have to remember that it's not your fault. So... What I'm trying to truly administer here is resilience. What I'm trying to say is don't wish for power or strength or uh, to be assertive or direct in the normal stereotypical fashion that society will tell about you to. Try to instead find harmony and peace of mind. Try to go inside yourself and try to understand and try to maintain and find a position of balance both in the darkest of days and in the best of days. Try to remain clear in your head and beyond that find some kind of ideal that is bigger than just harmony. Learn that harmony is not the only important thing to you. Learn that there is something more, something bigger beyond just stability or balance in emotions or in understanding of emotions. Learn also that emotions are important in themselves, that feelings are important in themselves. Feelings have value, feelings have meaning, feelings have purpose. It's not just important to understand a feeling, but it's also important to have it and show it and be open and transparent about it. Don't just hold your emotions to yourself. Don't detach from your feelings and tell yourself they're unimportant. Recognize that your feelings do matter and are important and do have value. And recognize that they are a part of your power and a part of what makes life life and what makes life meaningful. Feelings will teach and guide you the way to a happier life and a better life and deeper friendship, more intimate connections and more meaningful relationships. 
a person who can be open with their feelings and will not just hold their feelings to themselves, a person that can be vulnerable and can show and share their feelings with other people will be happier and will have more meaning and have more purpose in their life than a person who keeps and carries emotions to themselves. If you can learn to open up on this level, that is like the most important stage of awakening for an INFP or an INFJ. And the, it's the most important thing if you ever want to have a long-term steady relationship with other people, a deep and meaningful bond. You cannot keep things to yourself. You cannot trick yourself to that you're alone in this world. You cannot trick yourself that everyone's problem is your problem alone. You have to understand the meaning and the value of relationships and connections and bonds. You have to recognize the importance of friendship and you have to recognize the importance of other people also understanding and listening to you. You have to let people in when they are trying to help and you have to find a way to trust other people, ju not just to hide in yourself, in your own shell. So. You're looking to break out of the shyness and caution and the emotional reservedness that you have. But you're not looking to lose the emotions or the feelings themselves or to go numb or detached. You're not looking to be stronger in conflict or be to be more competitive. But you're looking to be more open with your feelings and more open to collaborate and to connect with other people. That's strength for an introverted feeling type. And I hope after watching this video, you'll never feel truly weak again. And I know that's perhaps a high aim to stretch for with the video, but that's why I made this video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.